Hi friends! Today we are covering Viseart's new Holiday Petite 4. I have my original Petite 4 video link up above and down below if you want to check that out. We'll dive into the swatches and apply each quad. Hmm. But if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well thank you so much for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things. All movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. If you want to check out my virtual class schedule and see what I'm up to outside of YouTube, well then please sign up for my newsletter down below. A huge thank you to Viziart for sending me these gems appropriately named because that is what they are inspired by. I was very happy to have received them as I had my eye on them. I actually ended up buying them <laughs> during the Viseart sale because I didn't know I was getting these. So in addition to the video, I'll also be giving away all new Holiday Petite Fours. These, of course, I'll be applying on my eyes and I'll have the giveaway ones all fresh for you on the box. All you need to do is be a part of the fam, subscribe, leave a comment, either an IG handle or an email to get back to you if you are chosen so I can contact you with the good news. We have our product knowledge card. It says here, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our vivacious vamps roaring into the winter party season with our new troop of sensational showgirls. To quickly cover the retail specs, these are each priced at $25 each. 6 grams total, which comes to a total of like, what, 1.5 grams per pan? Sure. They are currently available at VizierParis.com as well as Beautylish and Muse Beauty Pro. And they are still holding their holiday shop sale if you want to take advantage of 15% off site-wide. These palettes have a suggested shelf life of 36 months and they are all made in the USA. Each quad comes packaged in their own slip box. And what's beautifully noteworthy about the designs is just the Art Deco inspired print on the palette, when you turn it, you have the name here behind Petite Four Jardinet with the ribbon tab, magnetic flap, and once you open, you have your beautiful pans here enclosed in not only your plastic protective covering, but the frame is magnetic as indicated by the grooves here. So if you have the other Petite Fours, the ones that released, I think maybe six months ago, you can mix and match as you like. They are very easy to remove and insert again because they are magnetic. In terms of the inspiration, it says here, our celebration of all things luxe is inspired by the iconic French and American 1920s jazz age full of fabulousness, which I also think inspired the color color story from Bijouet, again, as indicated by the palette's beautiful art deco print design. Parties, jewels, cocktails from New York to Paris. Mm. And the flappers and vedettes who shone as bright as priceless gems. Our new petite fours are divine moments of sheer luxe to add that pop of pricelessness to any look. First up is Vedette, copper with the metallic finish, Cabaret, golden bronze with the metallic finish, Pigalle, a pale vanilla peach with a matte finish, and lastly, Cordial, a rich burgundy with the metallic finish. So here are all the swatches from Jardinet, I think represents the stone quite beautifully. Cause if you actually see the gem, there are several colors that show when it's exposed to light. And I think this quad captures not only that beautiful garnet color seen here in the burgundy metallic, but the neutral metallics paired with that color, I think could offer up a nice subtle daily garnet look. Next up, we have Lapis, which is inspired by the blue stone Lapis. First up, 19th, golden nude with the metallic finish. Bauhaus, ooh, silver with a very shiny metallic finish. Blue moon, pale vanilla peach with the matte finish, similar to what we saw in Jardinet. And lastly, we have Night Owl, royal blue, with the metallic finish. And here are the swatches for Lapis. You see that these have incredible shine and it looks to be, according to that swatch, that we might have to build up Night Owl, perhaps even apply a huet. We will see when we get to the demo. Next up, we have Peridot 
and this is inspired by the Petit Dot gem that's olive in tone. Illusion, a soft neutral buff brown with the matte finish. Gatsby, a khaki with metallic finish. Green light, forest green with metallic finish. And Gimlet, bright green, with the metallic finish. I think this captures Petit Dor quite beautifully in that, again, like Jardinet, if you would see the stone, it has all these different colors when light reflects on them. And the fact that we have an earthy khaki but with brighter green tones in the same quad definitely brings it to life. And lastly, we have bouillon, which is the metal used for coining. First, we have follies. Light gold with the metallic finish. 1919. Medium gold with the metallic finish. Brazen. Antique gold with the metallic finish. And lastly, we have gilded. Natural black with a matte finish. Ooh, that's a nice black. Here are the swatches for Bouillon. I think represents the inspiration quite beautifully. And definitely out of the four, this will be your go-to smoky quad. Now with all details and swatches out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> that's enough. Going in with the Viseart Eye Primer to prep these lids. Since we got the red flannel on, let's kick off the demo with Jardinet. Now, my one critique about the palettes is, of course, the lighter matte shades that would not be suitable for deeper skin tones. I would imagine they would apply quite ashy. Good to know, however, that the metallics dominate these quads. If you're my skin tone or lighter, you can use this matte to blur the edges of the metallics. If you are me or maybe a little deeper, you could use this matte possibly as a brow bone highlight or inner corner highlight. Taking my Tonsetto eyeshadow brush that comes in a set, I just want to dive into this shade here, which of course I don't, I'm sorry, names, hello, cordial, 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 taking it just on the lid. So I feel if you want to go the most vibrant route with this quad, then you will use the burgundy shade off the bat and I'm turning the brush on its side to blur the edges of this metallic. And if you want more details about the techniques I am using in this video, please check out my Bijouette video that I break down the several ways you can attack that palette, especially with the different gem tones found in it. I'm using the same techniques where you tap the color on the lid in a pull down method and then you use the same brush, turn it on its side to then blur the edges. I pulled it up way too high because I got a little overzealous. If that happened to you, have a brush on standby. Maybe it was one that you used concealer with just to dab off the color there and then go back in with the same brush without any additional product to better feather out the edges. Now, what I was talking about before in using this matte, if you are a skin tone like me or lighter, well, probably this would be more appropriate with me or a little deeper. You could use this matte to feather the edges of that metallic, but I wanted to go in with the metallic first to show you that these textures are very, blend friendly. You don't need a matte to blend the edges. As you saw, even before I went in with that matte shade, the edges looked quite blurred and smooth when blended, right? So you don't have to use that matte. If you do, and if you are deeper complected, you can use this as a brow bone highlight or inner corner highlight if you like, if it doesn't look too ashy on you. If you are lighter than me, this will probably show up as like a transition shade through your crease. Let's go in with this bronze shade. Now you could go in with the same burgundy metallic under your lash line, but I like to use different colors because that's just my jam. So you could pull it under your lash line. That looks really hazy. You could also use the same brush and pull down that burgundy metallic overlapping the more bronze. So it has that really nice gradient there. And again, if it went down too far, just use your buffing brush to kind of smooth that blend. And of course, going in with this beautiful copper now on the inner corner, overlapping that burgundy metallic, which I am completely and utterly in love with. I love the tone of this. I know it's not your typical neutral bronze or copper, but I think it quite nice to wear solo on the lid. You could even pair this with the Auric. I believe it's Disrupt. That's the cranberry shade. I think that will look killer. Pulling the copper now on the inner part of my lash line here. And now blending everything together in and out 
to make sure it appears smooth. Now, if you're like Alicia, I love you, but I'm not doing that. Well, you could actually do several things. How about this? Let's say you just wanna use this mat. Okay, fine. Let's take the mat all over our lid, tap it on there. On me, it's just gonna look like a beige. It's slightly lighter than my, my lid skin tone, so it doesn't look like it's disappearing, but it's not something that I would rely on to give my lid coloring, you know? If you don't wanna use this metallic burgundy like I did here, you could take a thin shader brush, pick up that metallic burgundy, and now pull it across your lash line. So this is a great way to invite a shade that you're not comfortable wearing on your lid with. You can now turn it into like, a wing-ish type of a moment here. And you could go a little thick with it so you could see it. And again, these textures are really smooth and easy to blend and deal with. So don't fear like you're gonna have trouble. I don't think you will. Isn't that lovely? Put on some lashes and you're done, see? So you could go this or you could go here or or I'm just taking off a little bit of that because I want to show if you just wanted to apply this bronze shade in the same fashion that we did the first demo. You just take that bronze shade all over the lid and that's gonna be your easy go-to bronzy-ish smoky eye. Yes, if you don't wanna use the burgundy matte all over the lid, you could just go in with that shade instead. And listen, you could even drop on that burgundy here overlapping the bronze and I think that's quite nice if you don't want to use a black liner or even a brown one and I'm just floating the metallic through the crease again without having to use a matte shade taking the same metallic here on the lower lash line if you want you could use that vanilla matte on the inner corner so on me, on that part of my eye, it will appear a little more highlighty. But I wanna fully commit to this burgundy wing. So I'm adding more here. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Here are the finished looks using Jardinet. We have the more burgundy heavy leaning metallic on one eye and using that burgundy as a wing for the other, primarily using the golden bronze all over the lid for the more bronzy, smoky look. And lashes are on, chandelier, classic charm. These are a little big, but I, you know, jazz club, party. They're the party lashes. Now that we covered Jarnay, why don't we go into Lapis. If you want to go straight into the blue, because I understand, in the same fashion I applied the burgundy metallic from Jardinet, you will then put the blue here right on the lid and just keep it there. This is a actually like a, a warmer tone blue. It doesn't have the same consistency as the, what is it? Cordial. I'm actually going to take this with my finger because I think you would get the best stick and color impact if you do so. Because we really got to commit to this color if you do. So if you love color, but maybe you're not comfortable applying it, I would then just go in on the lid first, okay? Take your fluffy shader brush, one that's flat, on both sides, but fluffy at the tip. Take Night Owl and then pull it through your crease in a back and forth rainbow-like fashion. And that's when you'll start to blur the edges and know the color will travel higher. If you don't want it to travel this high, if you have smaller eyes, make sure you keep the color right on the lid and maybe use a smaller brush to whip it through your crease so you could keep it more compact and it not travel high towards the brow. This is a lovely color and for a quick reference, if you want to see how it compares to Cubism, Cubism from Bijouette is a lot brighter and Night Owl more smoky if you can kind of detect that. Again, Night Owl, Cubism. Cubism has a lot more shine, and I think overall, like a smoother metallic, it reminds me of Cordial from Jardinet. To fluff the outer edges of the color, go circular inward so you can control the placement. Now, in terms of what we can apply on the inner corner, I think we definitely have to go with the silver. That's going to be such a beautiful pop in terms of how it contrasts with Night Owl and the shine 
is absolutely beautiful. So let's tap that on the inner corner of the eye and I'm also pulling it in towards the lower lash line. So we're wrapping it from outer to inner. Night Owl with that same shader brush now on the lower lash line. If you want it, you could use the matte like we had demonstrated in the first demo just to blur the edges. But see, this is a little light for me as well. I actually wouldn't use this to blur the edges of Night Owl. I feel it kind of dulls it a little bit, but that's totally your prerogative. I probably would have applied it closer to the brow bone just to offer up a little bit of highlight there. I'm going back in with Night Owl actually with my fluffy shader to bring in a little more color so it could be exclusively that shade but blurred. And when blending, if you felt like you blended away some of the color from the lid, you'll just tap on more with your finger and then leave the crease as is. Now taking Linda Halberg's crayon in Aqua Flash. Eye number one is done. Let's check out this like golden something, all that shiny. When I swatched this, I was like, wow, wow. This is a little more flaky-ish than Night Owl. So when you get it on the lid, make sure you press those uh, pieces down because they pretty much melt easily but whoa that is that is shiny so you could wear this on its own just as is like this okay if you wanted to wear night owl but not in this way you could place night owl on the inner part of your eye you could also do night owl on the inner corner i know that's a a robust way to go, but possible, especially if you're deeper complected, you can definitely get away with Night Owl on the inner corner. I think that would be quite nice. I'm placing that metallic here on the lower lash line, outer part, because I want to take the silver on the lower inner part of the lash line here, so it could kind of overlap with the golden shade. And just for fun, let's see how the blue looks like if we were to go in the inner corner with it. I'm placing it over that gold shade or goldish champagne shade. And it's gonna be dark for sure, but I think it's a nice opportunity to invite Niall to the party. If you wanted to really use the blue, but you weren't too sure with how or rather where to apply it, I think that's quite nice. It's not too bad. I don't think it's so dark that it's, you know, hindering the look. Again, you can skip the blue altogether and just commit to like that champagne shade and then have the silver on the inner corner and be done. Or you could put the blue on, just so you can see, on the outer part of your lash line here. I'm using a shader brush to build the color faster than a typical pencil brush. And in the same fashion where we applied the burgundy metallic, you can then apply the blue as your liner if you like. You could wet it too so you can have a little more glide on the, on the skin and a little more brightness too. So there are different ways you could incorporate that shade. You could go back and forth between the blue and the champagne gold just to kind of work the color how you want it in terms of controlling the gradient. And here are the finished looks using La Piece, a blue dominant eye, having night owl all over the lid, and then using night owl as accent with the more golden champagne shade dominating the lid. And on the lashes, I have chandelier, but a more, which are more light, you know, and easier to put on. And slapped on some beignets, so. Now that we cover the blues, it's time to cover petty dough time. And we got the petty dough flannel on to match. I need to go in with the khaki metallic first because I cannot wait to see that just all over the lid. Fluffing that on the lid first. And as suspected, just judging from the swatch, it doesn't have the same consistency as the burgundy metallic found in Jardinet. It's very subdued. Maybe you were looking for that and you didn't want something crazy shiny, something leaning more satin and finish. And the matte we have here for me, will show up more as a transition shade. And if you're deeper complected, 
possibly can be a highlighter shade for brow bone or for inner corner if you're lighter than me it's going to give you a little more smoke so why don't we go in and see how it pairs with the khaki metallic it's giving me a lovely gradient I much prefer this tone over the ones found in the other quads. And as you see here, I'm just punching on more of that metallic. This consistency is a little drier than the more jungle and lime green metallic found in the palette. But the color is really nice. It has like gold sparkles in there. So when the light shines over it, you can see like that gold gleam come from the shadow. And I'm gonna keep it really simple and place that under the lash line have a little bit of lapis here left over definitely have to go in with linda's vega flash it's just like an olive toned crayon that i think will pair very nicely oh well, actually it's a little more green than that i don't mind i like a little more color there just to create a little more contrast so i am a temporarily <laughs> migrating from the palette so whatever green tone liner you have if you want a little more contrast on that khaki go for it for sure and now with that lime inner corner highlight absolutely i think that's going to pair beautifully with the khaki tone it's going to lighten up the eye present some contrast here so we could add a little more vibrancy to the look and now what to do with the jungle green well, you know, based on what we have already accomplished, any of those techniques can be applied to this green. You can apply it all over your lid and buff the edges. You could use it as an accent wing. You could also apply it on your lower lash line, maybe on the inner lower lash line, just for a little touch of that. I don't know what to do. I'm stumped. I have a lot of ideas. Actually, I just wanted to show how this matte looks solo because I think it was hard to see when I paired it with that khaki green. So it shows up a little more here. It's not showing up like the mattes that exist in Bijouette. It doesn't have that much depth even on me, but yes, I could use it to fluff the edges of the metallics here if I wanted to. Let's slap on the lime green now all over the lid, pulling it from the inner corner and over the center here tap it tap tap now with green light you know i was gonna go in with the shadow wing fam i can't help myself first go along the lash line and then start to build it angle it as high as you think appropriate for your eye shape or you don't have to take it out at all and just stop it here right at the edge oh this is turning out to be a very big wing Oopsie. Now with the khaki on the lower, you can go in with green light instead, you know, just to match what we got here on the top. But I think it's nice to add that smokiness of khaki to the lower lash line. And here are the finished looks using Perido. I actually added a little bit of the lime metallic under the wing to serve as some contrast because I wasn't, well, I'm still not crazy about how the wing turned out. I think I took a little too high. But just so you can see the different ways you could use the medium green shade as an accent shade instead of all over the lid. I love the khaki as a standalone shade. It has like gold reflex in it. It actually reminds me of a softer Wicked Envy from Pat McGrath's Midnight Sun. Just, that's one of my favorite olives. It's definitely more hearty. It has a little more punch than this color, but I think for that person who rather do with this texture that's just softer very easy to blend as you can see you do have to build the color because when blending it out it does sheer out quite a bit so just know when you want to build the color on the lid you'll go in either with your finger if you want to use a packer brush however you want to do it also i realized you can take this color here and tap it on top of the khaki and that's going to bump up a little bit of the brightness so if you didn't want it to look exclusively khaki if you want a little more vibrancy but you didn't want to put that color only on the lid you can definitely mix and match and i love my khakis and my greens and my lime so far this is my favorite again i just love the curation i think it's done so well in terms of the different types of greens found in the palette and of course it matches 
my green flannel. And with that said, we are at our last quad. You know what that means. Is bullion time. Now you can apply any of these metallics depending on your skin tone on the center of your lid and then use the black matte as a wing accent. Maybe you don't pull it out for a full on wing. You just keep it here on the outer edge of your lash line. Maybe bring some here on the lower to create those smoky brackets. I want to see how this matte performs. So we're definitely going in with the halo eye, taking the black matte and I'll place it here on the inner part of my eye. And this is with a fluffy shader brush. So not only can I pick up ample amount of product and place it on the lid, but I can use the edge of the brush to start pulling that across the crease. You could also tap it around. So if you're not used to using black shadow, I can understand. Sometimes people like to go in with a tone shadow that's maybe two or three shades deeper than your skin tone to serve as a transition shade. That would be a lot easier so that the black shadow has something to blend into and it doesn't look as abrupt, right? It doesn't come to a complete stop. Because I'm comfortable with blending, I'm just going in raw, okay, with the black. And now with the more traditional crease brush, this is the Isom S33. I'm using circular motions to buff the edges of the black shadow to shape it a little bit more. I didn't wait for the primer to fully set, so <laughs> it's definitely making the shadow adhere more than I would like, you know, which could be a good or bad thing depending on. This is a discontinued Eason brush, is the G30 Pau. It's a little bigger than the S33, but I just need a little more haze here. So, you know, we're doing okay. We got the black on, it's there. I just want a little more, just a little over that. I'm really fighting for this this wing-like shape, which doesn't usually take me this long, but I was impatient in waiting for the primer to fully set. And this is my eighth eye look, so my, maybe my lids are just done. You know, they're just done. As you can probably assume, you could take any of these metallic shades. I'm taking the more medium champagne shade and just tapping that right in the middle. That is absolutely gorgeous. You know, bouillon will be your traditional smoky, going out, New Year's eye, grocery shopping eye, whatever type it is, definitely that trope, right? So this, you know, this we're, we're fully committing here. I'm taking the black under the lash line, but not all the way because I do want to apply the gold right on the center of the lower lash line as like an accent moment. Gold shade now with a pencil brush, stamping it here right on the middle. And you could pull it down a little bit as well if you want it to take over more than the middle. I actually like to tap it a little bit over here on the black mat so it overlaps. Now, when you apply black shadow on the inner part of your eye, it will close the eye. So if you already have small eyes, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. I would recommend that you go in either the lighter champagne shade or the medium one here on the inner corner to create some brightness. If you have bigger eyes, then you can get away with applying the black shadow on the inner part. It's really gonna close the eye, however, so please use a small brush so you have control over that placement. And now, of course, with the lightest metallic here in the palette, that will be our standout inner corner highlight. Just stamping that on, it's slightly overlapping the black matte here on top and bottom. Now, if you're like Alicia, there's no there's no way I'm doing that. Give me something else. Well, well, of course, let's go in with the gold. I'm definitely tapping that on the majority of the lid. It leans more yellow here, so you can either use this shade or the more medium champagne shade. Just using a fluffy shader here to better place the shadow all over the lid 
so those edges could look cleaner. Same light champagne shade here on the inner corner. And now my little Surratt brush, taking the black mat and now tapping that on the outer part of the lash line. I will purposefully not create a smoky wing. I want to now create like the three quarter brackets that I spoke about at the beginning. So not only will we apply the shadow on the top lash line, we'll also tap it here on the bottom. But again, three quarters in, and they meet here at this point. So you can make a point or you can stop it closer to the lash lines if you want. Unfortunately, mine is already turning into kind of like a wing because ain't just that how it goes. And I'm just going back and forth between the matte shadow and winging it a little bit, blending, winging, winging, blend. That's not too bad. Not too bad. I felt like it was going into disaster territory, but I think we're okay. I was a little traumatized by this eye. <laughs> now with the medium champagne shade, that will be our color of choice for the rest of the lower lash line here, overlapping that black matte so it can appear smoother with that transition. And you're gonna get a little scatter, a little uh, fallout from the metallics. They're like, they're very shiny, but they have a little bit of dryness to them that I feel best dealt with if you use your finger to press them on and then go in with the brush to just refine that application. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going back on this eye because I definitely went a little too high. You see that this is just looking a little too, a little too hardy for me. So I'm tapping that down with my concealer brush just so it could get a little more haze, that there's a more prominent gradient. And because there's still concealer on the brush, it kind of turned it to like a gray, which I'm not mad about. I rather opt for that softer gradient rather than having it come to like that harsh stop. If you happen to have Lapis or even Jardinet, you could use now the lighter matte to feather on the brow bone here. And that's going to help blend down the black for sure. Or you can take your loose powder that you might have used when doing your face. So full disclaimer, I actually had to restart this portion of the video because I forgot to apply my primer and the way this eye look was turning out, I was questioning my abilities for sure. So I still have a little bit, unfortunately, of that black shadow that's still lingering. So I'm using my concealer to clean this up a little bit more just so that it doesn't appear bad. <laughs> That's the problem with black shadow. You really have to be careful with it in terms of how much you apply and, and all that stuff. I definitely went in with it alone. So no, you run the risk absolutely of it looking very smoky quickly. And by all means, please apply a lighter shade on the crease first if that's going to help you blend better. I didn't because I just wanted to stick closely to the quad and not escape it. But I did anyway, applying that lighter peach matte on my brow bone. But you don't necessarily have to buy two for that step. You could use the, again, either pressed or loose face powder and that can serve as a blurring powder for the black shadow, absolutely. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. So here are the finished looks using Boudillon. We have the super smoky party eye on one side and the more chill party eye on the other, primarily relying on the black matte for the accent wing on the outer corners. And we got the party lashes back on. They're back on. Well fam, I hope this video helped not only in providing you some inspiration, perhaps you were having trouble in how to approach these new holiday quads and how to use the different colors in there. Although there are only four, I understand if you're not used to using eyeshadow or having 
more than one shade available to you that you might feel stumped. I wanted to do two looks per quad and I know this video is quite long as you probably have already seen. We do have the time stamps down below just so that you could browse through, pick the section you want, or if you save this video, you can go back to the section quickly without having to watch the entire thing. Let me know what your favorite holiday petite four is down below. And again, to enter the giveaway, I'll have this I guess giveaway go until like a few days after upload. I'll put clothes in the title when it has wrapped and we'll reach out to the winner and we'll send those over to you right away. I'll see you down in the comments fam and until then that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then I will see you in here again with another review tutorial Visiot extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.